Today we are going to focus on building something to be able to actually discharge your batteries. If you have a LiPo battery, a LiPo, LiPo battery like this one, and you don't want to use it for a while, you should always put it into a discharge or to a storage mode. To be able to do that quickly, you need some kind of discharge unit. You can either hook up a, some lamps or something else to it, that's fine. When you have a charger like this i charger here, there is a mode where you actually can take the battery from one end and output to another to be able to discharge. If you use the internal built-in discharge functionality, that will take you ages if you, for example like me, have tens and other tens of batteries like this one. I mean, if I would be using the internal battery here when I have been out flying and I have all my big batteries charged, that will take like three or four days. So let's see what we are going to use. Um, you can use this on different ways. Here's two types of resistors. Uh, this one, an aluminum caps resistor. This one can use. I mean, you can put down roughly 100 watts through this one if you are connecting it to a uh, flange like this one or even a bigger one like this one. Um, my plan is to be able to handle roughly, I would say roughly 500 watt. So I would need at least a couple more of these. I have those as well but they are 10 ohm and those are 1 ohm. I could utilize all those together, build it up on a flange like this one with some fans, uh, let's see if we have fans here, here's a couple of fans and attach those, that would be doable uh, but today I'm going to build a little bit bigger unit and I will not use those, I will actually be using resistors like this one they are 5 ohm and I have 5 of those so I will be connecting them in parallel that means we will have 1 ohm and 5 I have tested those, they can easily handle 100 watt each uh, without getting too warm. I mean, I'm going to use a fan anyway. To connect this up, you need decent cables, and I'm really talking about thicker cables and plugs that are good and will be able to withstand this kind of power. Um, so, how do I mount this? How will I connect it together? I was actually thinking of building a stand upon some kind of wood plate and then I will be standing the copper tubes like this and in between these I will be mounting them and solder them into place. The copper tubes will give me enough, um, they will be able to handle their power at least without an issue and then from those I will be connecting these thick wires to those connectors. Easiest is to use a cutter like this one. So, two pieces cut. Let's clean them up a little bit. And to clean them up, the best way is just to use normal sanding paper and rub them a lot. Like this, for example. When that's done, it's time to actually take those. Since I already put them together like that, I most likely will utilize that and have them on the inside instead. And to have them on the inside, I need to clamp them somehow. The important part when using this is I'm going to drill and put this down, some part down. But I'm not going to drill this until I actually solder them in place. When everything is rigged up, it's time to solder. Um, this can be a little bit tricky because you have a big surface and a lot of heat, and especially in the first joint when everything is a little bit tangly together. Uh, but you need to heat up this stuff really a lot. Because if you don't do it, it will not stick on the tube. And if you get a cold joint there, 
it will not work well at all. You need to be able to do as I do now, where you actually can put down the thinner on the tube itself. And you want a lot because you want a big contact surface. So you need to make sure that you get, get a big strong even joint like that. If you are using a big iron like I am, it's not hard at all and it goes really fast. But what you need to do now is actually wait until it cools down because if you remove it too early it will still be soft and you will be able to, it will just fall off. You can feel on it if it is hard or not and it's actually getting harder now. So now it's ready to be removed. Now it's time to do the next joint. And there you have it, two joints, uh, they are not pretty, but they will stick. Now it's time to do the other side. The same goes here, make sure that you have measured up where you should have them. And then just add them there. It's still hot on the knife one. For this end, I'm still of course going to add this one as well. When you have marked this out, just pick your drill. I will be using 10 millimeters in this case. Uh, the thing here is that you are not going to drill more than a specific amount of depth. In this case, I'm going to utilize, they are 45, so I'm going to drill 30 millimeters down. So what you should do to make sure that you don't drill any deeper, is actually to measure the drill. Take the depth you want. And then you just put the tape there, around it like this. And when drilling, you will make sure that you are drilling, of course, straight. And you don't go deeper than a tape test. Because if you do that, you will end up in the table as well. Now they should be fitting, and they do. Let's remove the tape here. Like that. There we have our power bank standing, and that's good. Uh, I could be running this without a fan, just like it is now, because I have tested this before and I had no issues at all. Uh, they get hot, but not hotter than they can be used, actually. Uh, I can see that they are a little bit uh, not straight. Let's bend that a little bit. This is, as I said before, this is very, very soft, this tube. Next step is to add the cables, they will be soldered directly to this as well. And I am using very very thick cables because I don't want any heat in the cables itself. I don't remember the ga gauge here but they are thick, they are very very thick. And they will be fitted onto this here, ADU cables, but they are made to actually have this thickness of the cable. They should have screwdriver like this. Oops, I took it out way too far. The important part is you have the cable all the way in. That was a little bit too short. And 
they are really really fine those cables this is a really good class that should be it and you screw them back together it's important that you get those screws all the way in enough otherwise you won't get be able to put the, this one back on like that professional so how long cables do you need let's say you put that on the side you generally don't want it in front you want it in the side so I would say that I need this length roughly roughly like that that should be fine You thin it like that, and you put this down on the side, and you make sure it is thin. Let's see if you can see it. Oh, this. And it's actually really, really important to heat up before you put on too much thinner because if you don't do it, you will get this cold joint, and the thin, the thin this one will be only. It will loosen again, it will loosen on you and you will have a disaster if you are unlucky. And this is that how it looks when both the cables are added. And I also added some stripes here to keep them together, that should be fine. Um, if I think that this or I feel that this one gets too hot, I will be adding a fan that will be sucking in this end. That also has a thermistor inside that will uh, fix the speed by itself. And that I will encapsulate it totally here. Uh, that should reduce the, the heat a lot. But for now, this is how we're going to do it. So, here we have this unit that's connected to one of the channels here. It then, let's see, I don't know if you can see that. That's better perhaps. As you can see, I have a big ass battery, 16 amp hours, 4 cell battery. I'm using a lot of those on the big machines. They are heavy and if you don't go on to use it, then you should discharge them. So, let's go ahead. I'm not sure if I have any preset channel here. Let's see if we edit this one. If we go to discharge, it says two channel it goes to this channel and the current limit is 30 volts uh, 30 amps so that should be fine or 33 watt volt on this side you will see how many amps it puts out on this bay here and on this side here you see the total Uh, I'm anticipating roughly 430 watt into this piece. Um, it's warm in that sense. I cannot really hold it. So I'm guessing 50 degrees or something like that. I'm not sure if it's going to get very much hotter. Probably a little bit. Yeah, it is. It's up to 60 degrees, something like that. But I am pressing it hard. I'm pressing it as much as possible, discharge as you can. And. I would say that I do need to have a fan on this later on, but for now this is good, it will not, it will work. And the cables, no heat in them. That cable there actually is a little bit warm, but it is a little bit thin. Uh, this one is nothing at all, because it is a lot more dense cable. So I would say this is pretty good, it works. Uh, hopefully someone liked it and... Uh, enjoyed watching it and someone got an idea how to do uh, I will build another one I will build with the other circus as well but I will be using a lot more than I had home now because I want to be able to pull at least eight to nine hundred watt out of a bigger one next time this is just for this small charging sta station so this one is fine and it's only for home use because it is a little bit fragile with this kind of resistors so 
Thank you for now. Please subscribe and like. And